Hello everyone, welcome back to Scrap Science. It has been quite some time since Scrap Science uploaded a video. Uh, I think it's been a few months at this stage, but as of today, we're back making content for at least a little while. Maybe a couple of months, I don't know, uh, we'll see. Anyway, straight into it. Quite a while ago, we made a video uh, extracting the sulfuric acid from a dead car battery. And that's what this acid here is. Um, I assumed in the video uh, that it was around 35% sulfuric acid, but a lot of people in the comments have told me that that's probably not true. Since the battery is dead, a lot of the sulfuric acid um, will have reacted with the lead plates uh, during the battery charge and discharge cycle uh, to form lead sulfate, which uh, depletes the concentration of the sulfuric acid quite considerably. So we're going to measure the concentration of our sulfuric acid that we obtained uh, today and see if it is actually a reasonable concentration or not. And more importantly, in that video I stated that the sulfuric acid that we extracted from the battery uh, contains quite substantial lead contamination. There's a lot of lead dissolved in the sulfuric acid. So this, to me, was quite alarming uh, because, well, lead is just something you never really want to work with if you don't have to. I mean, it's poisonous, uh, you can't put it into the environment, uh, and any experiments that you do with it uh, inevitably get contaminated with the lead that's actually in the sulfuric acid, and then it's very tricky to dispose of and everything like that. So it'd be really nice if we could remove the lead out of this acid. Now, obviously, the easiest way to get rid of the lead is just to distill the sulfuric acid. I mean, that'll get rid of all of the impurities pretty much and leave you with pure concentrated um, sulfuric acid. I'm not prepared to do that though, and I assume most of my viewers are probably not quite prepared to do that either. So we're gonna have to find some other way to remove the lead. Now, you might think there'd be some way to precipitate the lead out of solution. So we could add some kind of anion to the solution that would precipitate out the lead as an insoluble salt. However, it's really hard to find anything that will selectively precipitate the lead without reacting with the sulfuric acid itself. So avoiding distillation and avoiding precipitation, what are we left with? Now, quite a few people in the last video uh, suggested, quite rightly so, that electrolysis would be a good way to remove the lead from our solution because our sulfuric acid itself is electrochemically inert under electrolysis and the lead contamination is in the form of lead 2 plus which is easily reduced on the cathode in electrolysis so if we electrolyze our solution we should just get lead metal um, plating onto the cathode uh, lead metal is very easy to deal with it's definitely um, a lot easier to handle and dispose of than any um, salt of lead it's also much less poisonous as well. So this is a win-win. We get pure sulfuric acid roundabout and we get to remove the lead as a very non-toxic form. So we're gonna give that a go. We will take a 200 milliliter sample of our sulfuric acid um, in just a beaker and we will electrolyze with some carbon rods and see just how much lead we can remove from the solution. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to get all of it out, but we're gonna give it a go anyway and see how much lead we can actually remove from the solution. And of course, uh, so that we can quantify our results, I have bought some lead testing strips so that we can actually measure um, the concentration of lead in our original solution and in our final solution. And there we are. I have the carbon rods in the solution ready to electrolyze with. We have our sulfuric acid straight from the battery. Um, and I'm about to put around three volts across the cell. So turning that on now. Yep, that looks like it's got it. As you can see, we have hydrogen on the cathode. We have oxygen on the anode, as we expect from the electrolysis of sulfuric acid. And if we wait long enough, we should be able to see uh, lead forming or plating on the cathode. I don't see any point to running the cell with a high current density or even a high current for that matter. So what I've done is I've just limited the current to 150 milliamps, I think. Um, I think that should be plenty to plate out our lead. I'm gonna leave the cell running for maybe 24 hours and we'll see how much lead we've removed. And final thing, I've put it in this box to contain any splatter from the cell or any spills or anything. All in all, we are pretty good to just leave this running for well, 150 milliamps, 24 hours, 
and again we'll just see how much lead we've removed in that time Okie dokie, the cell has been running for around about 27 hours now at 150 milliamps. The anode, well the original anode I had to replace because, well, the graphite fell apart, which makes sense, we are electrolyzing a solution of sulfuric acid and graphite falls apart under those conditions. You can see this is the original anode here, it just disintegrated completely. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, I think that's enough time, 27 hours to run the cell. I'm going to filter all of our resulting solution and then we will get to measuring the lead content. All right, so what we have here is this is our filtered solution uh, that we have electrolyzed. So hopefully we've removed um, some portion of the lead from this. Uh, here we have our electrodes. Now, a bit of a problem we see straight away is that the cathode that we've been using for electrolysis for 27 hours uh, we can't really see any lead forming on that. I'll maybe try to get a bit more light on that. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's a slight color change. Uh, you can see where it dipped into the solution, only just here. Uh, but that's really not looking like lead metal or any kind of shiny surface on the graphite. So it's a bit of a worry that you know we haven't actually removed any of the lead from the solution. But it is possible that the lead may be plated out as lead dioxide on the anode, which we definitely wouldn't be able to see because you can see how much that anode is falling apart. So who knows, maybe we have removed some of the lead anyway. Now, what we really want to test here, uh, these two beakers that I have here. Um, in this beaker, we have a solution that is 100 times diluted of our original acid. Now, this has been neutralized as well. Uh, same thing for this beaker, but this is our electrolyzed um, solution diluted by a factor of 100 and neutralized once again. So what we can do with these is I have some lead testing strips, as I've said, uh, and we can test both of these. I don't think these strips will give very uh, accurate measure of the lead in each one, but it should give qualitative results. Um, hopefully it'll be able to show that our final solution has less lead in it than our original solution so we'll give that a go okay here we have the two strips you can see um, they test a lot of things but we're only measuring lead content and that is measured by the end square on each one that should go more purple as there is more lead in solution so I'm gonna go and stick these into their respective beakers and we will see how purple each one goes Yep, I think that's a pretty obvious colour difference there. Well, there we go. It seems like according to our lead testing strips, um, by electrolyzing our solution of sulfuric acid, we were able to reduce the lead content by a factor of about a half, which isn't particularly impressive because, well, half the lead contamination really isn't that much of a big improvement, uh, but with Longer electrolysis, maybe this might be a viable way of removing the lead. I'm not really sure. I doubt you could remove all of it, as I've said before. Um, it'd just be really, really tricky to remove just that last little bit of lead that's left in solution. So honestly, overall, I think this method of removing lead from battery acid really isn't very viable. Uh, I wouldn't bother if you wanna use acid that you've taken out of a dead lead acid battery. Uh, what you're gonna have to do is distill it. Uh, in order to get rid of the lead contamination there's really uh, no other way that i can think of at least one other thing that i did do while we were performing this test was titrate uh, the concentration of our actual sulfuric acid uh, that we have from the battery um, titrating it gives uh, a concentration of approximately 20 to 22 percent acid uh, which is actually a lot better than i was expecting I mean, originally I thought it was going to be 35%, but then a bunch of people told me that it could be as low as 10% or something, so I was a little bit uh, worried, but titrating it, we get 20, 22% uh, sulfuric acid, which is, for this quantity of acid, around about 600 millilitres of concentrated sulfuric acid, which is not a trivial amount at all. Still, though, going to have to distill it at some point, which I'm not too happy about. Anyway, basically, you can get pretty good quality acid out of a car battery but it does contain lead and while you can remove some of that lead by electrolyzing the solution 
you pretty much definitely can't remove all of the lead so you're going to have to distill your acid at some point if you want to get rid of the lead contamination. See you later.